Here you go, honey. I thought you could use an upgrade. Ooh, RGB and mechanical switches? Actually, they're membrane switches with a tactile click, but what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Honey, you must have spent a fortune. Not even close. I'm not even mad at you for forgetting our anniversary yesterday. It's true, I did forget our anniversary, but I more than made up for it last night. Not even close. The Master Set MS120 is the latest RGB memchanical keyboard and mouse combo from Cooler Master. And for you lefties out there, you can also snag the MS121 with an ambidextrous mouse come October. Click on the link in the description for more info. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So today we are actually assembling September's PC of the month, which uh, you can see already a little preview of the case we're going to be using. Super exciting. This is actually going to be a mid to high end fully blown AMD small form factor gaming PC. Uh, we finally now have the, here in 2017, the, the parts from Team Red, both on the CPU and GPU front, although GPU accessibility right now for AMD is a bit debatable, that's a topic for another video, but we're gonna be using an AMD CPU and GPU for this build, and it's gonna be all encompassed, uh, or it's gonna be enclosed, I should say, inside of a relatively portable, portal, portable uh, chassis, and it's gonna be super fun and exciting. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's check out the parts, come on, let's go. Oh, we're here. That was a really short trip. So today we'll be building inside of the Portal Mini ITX chassis from good old Bit Phoenix. And if you guys haven't seen this case yet, it looks like something straight out of the video game. It kind of looks like one of the little robots that you interact with. It's, it's, it's a very fun looking case, very unique. The internal layout is just as unique as the exterior, in my opinion, as we'll take a look at in just a bit. It also comes in some varieties. Uh, you can get black or white, window, non-window. I'm going with a white windowed version. So you can see here the window's actually on top, giving you a look at your GPU. The GPU actually gets mounted uh, across the, uh, you know, depth-wise across the case uh, with a PCIe riser card, I believe. So that should be a pretty interesting little feature, and uh, I'm hoping that this goes smoothly, that we don't get uh, too many headaches from this from this, uh, from this little chassis here. But moving on, we've got a CPU to talk about. We've, we've got the Ryzen 5 1600, a fantastic chip that I have been using a lot lately, which is why this is a not a fresh, unopened box by any means. Um, it's a great price-performance chip from AMD for about $200. It's absolutely fantastic, six cores, 12 threads, and of course you get some great overclocking capabilities with supported AM4 motherboards like this ASRock Fatality AB350 Gaming ITX AC. I've actually never used this board before, pretty excited to check it out. It's got some decent features here, so you've got an RGB LED header, I don't think we'll be using that today, but it's nice to have the option. Dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, which is fantastic for a mini ITX board. Uh, some sound crap that we don't really care about. M.2 NVMe support and Intel Gigabit Ethernet LAN. For about 125 bucks, we're really ticking all the boxes that I look for personally when shopping around for a mini ITX motherboard. So excited to use that today. We're gonna be pairing that with a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. 16 gigabytes should be plenty for our needs it's a it's a great kit. I've been using this kit for for ages. Uh, I guess not too many ages because it's DDR4 and it doesn't go that far back, but it has great compatibility with Ryzen platforms, which I'm very excited about as well. We'll be able to hit 3000 megahertz, no problem, I would I would expect. And we've also got some decent uh, storage options here. So for our boot drive, we've got a 250 gig Samsung 960 Evo M.2 NVMe SSD. This is not quite as snappy as the 960 Pro, but we don't really need the Pro for gaming per se. So I think the Evo is going to be just fine. It's got a stupid fast controller and stuff on it. We've also got a one terabyte WD black hard drive. This is a mechanical drive, of course, and I thought I was getting the three and a half inch drive when I initially bought this, but uh, you know, this, this showed up on my doorstep. So I guess it works though, because we do have multiple two and a half inch drive slots in the portal and uh, going with the small form factor theme, I guess it can't hurt to, uh, you know, house some smaller drives as well. So one terabyte should be plenty for our games. And finally, Finally, we have the infamous, ever so evasive, Radeon RX Vega 56. Holy moly. So yeah, this is going to be my first Vega build, I believe, right? At least, at least small form factor for sure. Um, but this is a fantastic little card that has, well, it, it was destined to have great price to performance based on the initial price that AMD uh, promised us, and then with all of the, you know, price gouging or whatever you want to call it, now this card is going for about $550 on Newegg and Amazon, if not more. And uh, it's also very hard to find. So this build, sorry guys, if you were trying to part out this exact system, this might be the only part that you have trouble 
acquiring. And, and even for a decent price, you might have to overpay if you really want one of these guys. But since I have it, I'm gonna use it. A lot of you guys are uh, noticing the RX Vega uh, 64 that's just been chilling on top of the RGB build in the background of my videos, saying, Kyle, why aren't you using that Vega card? It's just collecting dust. Well, I, this, this one was collecting dust too, so I'm gonna use it today. I'm very excited to use it though. Um, it, is, it is super fast for, you know, if it was $399 like AMD promised us initially, then it's technically got a better price to performance than the GTX 1070, uh, just ever so slightly, but still. And um, yeah, I guess we're gonna run some benchmarks to see. I'm very curious to see how it performs with the, uh, the 1600 there, so that should be pretty cool too. But those are pretty much all the parts, ladies and gentlemen. The total cost of this build comes to around, based on, you know, depending on what you pay for the RX Vega 56, you're looking at anywhere from 1300 to about $1,500 for everything here. So like I said, this is sort of on the cusp of, you know, between mid-tier and high-end gaming system. Uh, you guys can take your pick, but there you guys have it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start piecing together this small form factor AMD gaming machine. Wait, why am I doing this? I have employees now. Heather, you're building a PC today. Okay. Alright guys, so Wifey Sauce has completed the build. Took you and Chris about uh, about two Me hours. And Chris. Two hours Me. more or less. Well well Chris had to film you guys and he did a, I'm sure he did a fantastic job. He, I'm he sure you did me out. He, helped. he gave me some so I think he should, you know, do, do it that Yes, way. he is a very yeah. useful intern. Yeah. I shall yes. use him. Use him in, in, in multiple ways. But um, how did the build go overall? It looks like it looks like it went pretty smoothly. Hold on, let me go ahead and slide this guy out. Let's take a look here. 
Let's take a quick gander. Okay, you got the, uh, yeah, it looks like everything is installed. You d there's no uh, fundamental parts missing. I see a graphics card, I see a CPU and a cooler. Or I don't see the CPU. Did you install the CPU? I did. Okay, just making sure. Um, so, so I guess, uh, what, what were you expecting going into this build and, and did, uh, did reality meet your expectations or not? I didn't expect it to be that difficult, but the one thing that gave me some trouble was the cable management. Like, since there's no like tie down spots or anything, mm -hmm. having to like figure out how, where, how to, you know, tie the cables down and stuff was kind of difficult. And it doesn't look as clean as a normal build does because you, you can't tie down the cables behind the case right. like you usually do. So that was a little frustrating. You know, putting, right? putting the cables in, it was like, it was pretty tricky at one point. Yeah, the A, the the a pin for the CPU, mm -hmm. I just could not reach down in there. So I had to take a zip tie and hold them together in place so that I can use both hands ah, to just push the, it down. The two four pin connectors you actually zip tied together, I zip -tied them together in order to sort right. of fit it back there without it going all over the yeah, place. Yeah, because there was no oh, way. There's no way I could that's, get it I've there. actually never had to do that, but it's good to know that that works because I'm sure that there's going to be some point where, where I needed to use that trick. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty clean. I mean, all things con considered, yes, it's true there are no tie down points from what I can see um, behind the motherboard tray, although there's probably not any room for cables back there anyway. I think just the way this case is designed, since the window's on top, which right. pretty much only shows your video card, they probably weren't, you know, too concerned. Too concerned about, about cable right. management on the interior, but it looks like for what you were given, you did a pretty decent job. I can see you stashed a lot of the excess cabling inside of the drive cage, mm -hmm. um, because there was only one drive that you had to mount off of the motherboard, right? The M.2 goes on the motherboard, right. and then you had that one two and a half inch mechanical drive. Right, that went right on the top of here. Why didn't you mount that drive to this, this tray on, on top? It was too big. The cage. It, was it was too, too big, big for, okay. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, you know, generally the uh, two and a half inch SSD is slightly smaller than a two and a half inch mechanical, it seems. Um, but uh, overall, looks pretty awesome. Were there any like, oh shit moments that you ran into at any point along the build or? Yes, that's a nod. That's a nodding of the of a yes. What, there was what happened? A, there was a big oh shit. Oh, there was a big shit. How how big of a shit was it? So after I was done, after I was done, you know, assembling the computer, and I was like, oh, I'm done. Yeah, I can show Kyle. Uh huh. You know, I had, you know, when I was building, I obviously took this part of the case and I put it off to the side, and then right. I was just building in this part of the case, right? Yeah. And uh, the cables, the front panel uh, connectors and cables were are connected to this side. Mm -hmm. So I had completely forgot about plugging those in. Yep. And so I had it all assembled. And you know how difficult they are because they're so tiny. Yeah. And I like. Especially with a small form factor build, it's even. Yeah. So I went and I grabbed, I was like, oh, I'm done. Yay, we can see it all put together. And I grabbed this and I just looked at Chris and I was like. Like you got really lucky though because it looks like yeah. all the front panel connectors are, are on the right that's side. That's what I was going to say what saved me. Is which the are fact not, that it was in the front. They're, they're not being blocked by any of the yeah. other components at all so it looks like you just had to plug them in and tuck the cables away so you got yep. really lucky there. Right. Dodged a big, uh, big right. bullet. Um, but uh, yeah I guess that's something to consider is that just the way this case works is that you, you sort of do all of your building outside of the case entirely. Mm -hmm. And so you don't really realize that there are front panel connectors attached to the shell exactly. that still need to get plugged in mm -hmm. to the uh, to the innards here. So, but mm -hmm. overall, honey, excellent job. Bravo, high five, high fives all around. And uh, good job to you, Chris. I think I think I deserve a donut. I think you do too. I was wondering what that donut was for and mm. it uh, it is for eating. That is now confirmed. Can I, just um, on I will have dish? to have a bite of that after we shoot. No, no, I have to do the ah! Mm, okay. All right, guys. This yummy, right? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out Fitwit Ultra, our ad-free early access channel. For about 50 months, the first two weeks are completely free and you can back out any Frickin friggin' dumb. time. I don't like doing videos with donut in my mouth. Why? It tastes good, but so it delicious. feels wrong. I'm so conflicted mm. right now. Okay, guys, have a good one. Bye. Bye.